we need to look at the shape of the coronary band. In the horse on the left, we see concavity of the coronary band towards its palmar one half. We see this type of conformation more often in horses with foot pain than horses without foot pain or other causes of fallen lameness. In a normal horse, the horn tubules should be parallel from dorsal to palmar. But we can see very clearly in both the left and right front feet that the horn tubules are more upright dorsally and pump come, become progressively more angulated towards the palmar aspect of the foot. And this reflects some degree of weakness of the structure of the palmar aspect of the hoof capsule. The shape of the hoof capsule is frequently an indicator of the orientation of the distal phalanx. So in the horse on the left, we can see that the heels are relatively crushed. The angle of the heel is at a much lower angle compared to the angle of the dorsal hoof wall. The angle of the dorsal hoof wall is not continuous. It is more steep proximally compared with distally. When we look at the orientation of the distal phalanx, we can see that in association with this low heel conformation, the palmar processes of the distal phalanx are at the same level as the toe of the distal phalanx. Moreover, this horse has been shod with a shoe which is too short. The branches of the shoe do not provide adequate support to the heel region. And the shape of the hoof capsule and the orientation of the distal phalanx within the hoof capsule is going to influence the loads applied not only to the navicular bone, but also to the laminae and their attachments on the distal phalanx. And in this horse, we can see highlighted by the yellow arrows, the irregular osseous margin of the palmar processes of the distal phalanx, both abaxially and on the solar aspect, reflecting abnormal um, stresses from the laminar attachments. As I said previously, the shape of the distal phalanx tends to mirror the hoof capsule. So if we have an asymmetrical hoof capsule, as seen on the left, with more foot and pastern laterally compared with medially, this is also reflected by the shape of the distal phalanx. So we have a greater width of the distal phalanx laterally compared with medially. And this is going to affect the loads that are transmitted, especially through the medial aspect of the distal interphalangeal joint. This is a more obvious example of proximal displacement of the coronary band, seen both in the weight-bearing position and in the non-weight-bearing position. And note also the axial placement of road studs on the shoe, which is not good for the way in which the horse will land on this limb. It's important to appreciate that there is a huge variation among horses in the hoof capsule shape of hind feet. But generally speaking, the heel is lower than that of the front feet. And as a result of that, the orientation of the distal phalanx will be different. 